Welcome to Mighty Married Moms. Join us at our kitchen table twice a week as the Mighty Married Moms, Debbie, Linda, Wendy, invite spectacular guests to weigh in on staying sexy, vibrant, and healthy, building marriages with soul-satisfying connection, raising happy, healthy, successful kids. Conversations with Mighty Married Moms will bring you closer to the life you really want. Episode 136. Hi, this is Wendy Williams, and marriage happiness is way possible. ConnectAgain.org is very happy to sponsor Mighty Married Moms. We are partners in bringing you closer to the life you really want. Visit us today for marriage boosts at ConnectAgain.org. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Mighty Married Moms. I am Debbie Owen from YouCanRaiseGreatKids.com, and I'm Wendy Williams from ConnectAgain.org. And I'm Linda Ty from AllWellBreakthroughs.com. And we just had a fantastic conversation with Craig Sigal from the TheMentalToughnessTrainer.com. Actually, it's MentalToughnessTrainer.com. He is the Mental Toughness Trainer. And um, what he does is he focuses, not exclusively, but primarily on helping youth athletes in order to um, become really successful at their sport. But primarily what he's doing, the, the, the background is he's helping them learn how to be successful in all kinds of areas of their lives. Life skills. Life skills. Through the sports door. Yeah. 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 Right? It's oh, really good. Open that door and, and in they walk because, as I mentioned in the interview, we have a sports mania in this country. Yeah. Yes. We, we really do. do. We it's, really do. You know, I have a bunch of friends who are in the UK and um, one of my coaches, Sarah Newton, who we've interviewed in the past. She is just amazed when I tell her about sports. She's like, well, that would never fly here. Of course, she says it with her lovely British accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, oh, no, no, you don't understand. It's huge in this country. Right. Sports are huge. And we're, we're in, the three of us are from New England. We're, uh, we're not in Texas. We're not in major sports country. We're not, in, uh, or Michigan, or, you yeah. know, all these places where the Big Ten are, or whatever, yeah. where it's really like a, a, a weekly family event. It's like stood up and show yeah. up at the, at the yeah. games, and that's just not part of our culture particularly. Not Maybe for us, us anyway. Yeah. Not for us. I'm sure there are people around here for whom that is kind of a big deal. I mean, we live here. I just don't hear it yeah. more and more and more. Boston, well, Boston raising College. kids now, I yeah. hear. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Boston, Boston College is nearby, and there are people that will mm-hmm. go to BC games, um, yeah. Northeastern, you right. know, for hockey, perhaps. And yeah. yeah. You know. Hockey's growing. Yeah. Yeah. Cross is growing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. the youth, the youth sports thing. Mm-hmm. But as you, as you said, a kid's not going to walk in a door that says personal development for my long-term growth and development. <laughs> no. They are going to walk in a door that says, you know, mental toughness in sports and, yeah. you know, be a good winner at your game. Mm-hmm. And they're learning all these amazing ways. What did he say? Focus, confidence, determined resilience, especially under pressure, mm-hmm. is how he describes what mental toughness is. Yeah, and that could be at sports. It could be in anything. Anything. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would yeah. imagine, right? People don't necessarily like to admit they're having a problem being a parent or with mm-hmm. their kids, but they can say, oh yeah, they need some help with their sports performance, which then will feed them into every area of their yeah. life. So yeah. it's really smart, smart way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Give right. everybody yeah. that doorway to come in, parents and kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, he coaches a lot of adult better. athletes too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and I know uh, Craig's background prior to this was um, he did uh, hypnotherapy in all kinds of situations, people giving up smoking, people with weight loss, because he said he did a lot of weight loss stuff. So all kinds of areas. I don't remember yeah. him saying that, that he had a background in hypnotherapy. He didn't. He didn't, but, did but you know but that. But you know that. <laughs> well, that's interesting. But I thought his, his example about the golfing was really wild. Like, Tell him, you know, yeah. That he was, you know, trying to get down to under 80, right? Which I'm not a golfer, so it means nothing to me. <gasps> but um, but to golfers, I know it means everything. And he couldn't do it. He practiced and he practiced. 25 and he years. Technique and he, yeah, for 25 years and was going to throw it out. And then he learned... You know, several of these techniques of mental, what he now now calls mental, mental toughness practice. and mental practice, mm-hmm. and went out and did a 77, like without, without even you know, having thrown no, the golf clubs in the garage, head. never to use them again, pulled them out, and then boom, you know, made the breakthrough because it was a mental breakthrough. That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Where can we apply that in our lives? Oh, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, he, 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 he gave a great example about, because I asked him about weight loss, mm-hmm. right? You know, he's all going to associate weight loss with only about eating the, the right, right foods, foods and getting out and exercising. And I know a lot of frustrated people out there that are exercising and they're eating right and they're saying, I can't the scale is just not budging. And, uh, you know, and so that whole um, mental preparation into, as he, his example was, so where is it that you fall apart, right?
like, what is it that you crave the chocolate or the cookies or the Cadbury eggs that you like to talk about a lot? <laughs> and so, um, where do you crave them and when do you um, eat them? I mean, one thing is don't have them in the house. But I've been in that place before. Okay, I'm not going to go buy it. And I've heard other people say it too. And then you go out and you buy it somewhere else. You end yeah. up kind of spending more money yeah. in a way. You know, um, um, it, it doesn't really necessarily solve the problem. You've got to solve it in here. Yeah. If you don't solve it in here, yeah. you're not really going to solve it. I mean, I met a woman one time that would go, she didn't want, she said, I'm going to lose weight by not buying anything. And she would go buy a cake and she would have to eat the whole thing before she got home in the car. Oh, no. She wasn't going to allow it. Oh, no. In the <laughs> house. And it's like, okay. It won't go in the house, but it can stay in my car. Not a good strategy. <laughs> not a good strategy. So he, wow. he says, so figure out, like, okay, is it 9 o'clock in the morning or when is it that you get bored? And you go, oh, I'm going to go to the refrigerator and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to look for something um, or go to the cupboard, whatever it is. So um, imagine what can I do in place of that um, when I'm at a time where I'm going to have a lull and I'm going to get bored and I'm going to go to food. Right. I think that's pretty common. You get bored and you turn to food. But do mental practice um, so about mental what practice. that's going to be like so at maybe you're, tomorrow. Yeah, maybe you're going to garden at that time or maybe you're going to go to the gym at that time or you're going to do some task at work where you say every day at 9 o'clock, I'm going to do a certain task, and so therefore I won't be going to the refrigerator, and then go through that in your mind and put yourself in that place, and successfully in that place, and eventually it will it will happen, you'll be going to the chocolate for the time. It reminds me of Peggy Huddleston, does that name mean anything that you no. want to do? No. She's a nurse, and she wrote this book called Prepare for Surgery, and, what, mm -hmm. and if you know that you're going to have surgery, uh, some people end up, you know, waking up going, what happened? Oh, your appendix burst or whatever, but if you know that you're going to have a surgery, like my upcoming ACL surgery. That's yeah. right. Okay, so prepare for surgery might be something for you to think about. Mm -hmm. And basically, you enlist the help of the anesthesiologist who talks to you while you're under and says specific things that, you know, I won't go into every detail, but basically says things to you under anesthesia. And you and your loved ones have worked out, when I wake up from the surgery, and this happened with my husband and I, I said, I want you to say to me, Wendy, everything went just great. You're doing great. And the, and the doctor's really happy with what went on. The first words out of your mouth need to be that. Can you practice that for me, honey? And he said yes, and that's exactly what he did. And so I had this short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals about my surgical recovery. So short-term was mm -hmm. when I wake up, I was going to, everything was fine, everything went well, which was true. It wasn't lying, mm -hmm. but it was true. But they were very specific words. And I did this all through what I call guided imagery, but now I'm thinking of calling it mental practice, mental practice rather than guided imagery or gu guided visualization mental practice and then the medium thing was two days later I would say to myself I'm everything's working well my stomach feels great I'm eating what I need to eat I'm not I'm not you know uncomfortable at all everything's going well and then the long term was um, that in six months I was going to feel like a million bucks I was going to wear a certain outfit I was going to be standing in front of a group talking and teaching people some wonderful things and I had a, and I had a big smile on my face everything happened exactly as I said it would because Every you, say, you practiced it in advance. I practiced it in yeah. advance. And it, all, and it wasn't like I could orchestrate that, but everything actually happened. Mm -hmm. And the other one was, not only was like three days later where I didn't feel good, but a month later somebody would be visiting me in my kitchen and we would be eating some, my, my stomach surgery. So it was something to do with eating. And so this person would come to visit and we would have a lovely meal where I wasn't uncomfortable and we could just talk that my eating and my stomach issues weren't really a problem, it was just talking. Mm -hmm. And that actually happened too. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like I said, don't forget, you're gonna come because I need to make my visualization come true. No, it just it just worked out. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 there's so many applications of this mental practice. Uh, mental practice. <laughs> so many yeah, applications yeah, yeah, yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, and it reminds me of the conversation that we had not too long ago with Dana Wilde. Yeah. And the mantra, that that one woman was using, which was the weight's falling, the off, weight's falling off, falling off of me. Yep, the and weight's falling off, and of me. she would picture it falling off, literally, literally on the floor. So she's well, a visual person. She's already. a visual person, right? But it doesn't doesn't have to be. What's a visual it feel thing. like? My pants are so loose. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, I feel and, light. Yeah. I feel like I could run up the stairs. Mm -hmm. you know, right. Whatever right. that that right. is. That yeah. sense. That mm -hmm. sensation. Whatever is works for you. Yeah, because he said that. Tiger Woods does not a visualization. Per he doesn't visualize. He things. can't visualize. So when his coach says, it. "Picture that ball going right into the mm -hmm. cup or whatever it is," <laughs> and he said, "I can't see any." He said, "What do you say? A, a fun, a fun house. Yeah. yeah, like everything's all jumbled up." But he says, "You'll feel what it feels like to go. It's in." You know, the guy went. Got in it. other words, he uses imagine. 
yeah. yeah. that a picture is, is imagine. Imagine, yeah. Yeah. imagine what what would what would it feel like? What would it look like? Right. What would it, you know how what would be happening? Right. Um, so the word imagine is a good one for that as well. Yeah. 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 I liked it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was really powerful. Yeah. And he said, and he and he's working with other people to help them to be local experts in communities to be other coaches where the kids can come. Yeah, I'm, somebody I'm full disclosure. I'm working with Craig, and yes. um, I'm really excited. He's he's teaching me a lot of his strategies, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to implement them with with uh, young people. Well, yeah. Young people, that's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it seems so great makes such great sense, mm-hmm. and he's so vibrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's a really good. And guy. I think that I think the key too is. Um, you want to, um, a, a, as you're working with your child, uh, assuming that you're not going to work with Craig or me or somebody like that, as you're working with your child, you want to help them change their perspective. Um, I think, uh, and you can't say, oh, let's reframe, you know, because a kid's not going to know what that yeah, means. Yeah, right. yeah. So you, you talk to them about, well, what's the story behind that? What's the story that you're telling yourself? Because kids love stories, right? Yeah. right? right. If you're going to talk, tell a kid a story. Get vivid. Yeah. yeah. That's how they picture things. That's how they feel things. And so you say, well, that's that sounds like it's quite a story that you're telling yourself. Is there a different story that we can tell? Right. You know, what's what would you like to imagine happening right. instead? Instead of I'm so embarrassed I'm going to die. Yeah. Use right. that analogy. And, yeah. and, and, and you're like, have you been embarrassed before? Well, yeah. And yet you didn't die. <laughs> you're here to tell the story. <laughs> you're here to tell the story. Yeah. yeah. It's it's so it makes the kid go, oh yeah, maybe embarrassment doesn't kill. Hmm. Yeah. And use humor with your kids. Too. Yeah. I mean yeah. that's that's helpful. Sure. Kids always re- relate to, to funny stuff. They, they'll they'll roll their eyes and say, oh, Mom, I'm so bad. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's okay. Your friends can see. Absolutely. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's so great when you plant those seeds and you feel like it's going nowhere, and then suddenly one day they spit it out like it's your own idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think the thing that, that Craig was pointing out too is, is uh, in this particular case that you're bringing up about the embarrassment, have them finish the story. And I, I wanted to really push them all the way through. Well, what does that look like? And yes. I think that that's important. Have the kid finish the story of what would happen if they were in this situation. What's the worst thing that could happen? Right. Okay. And what, well, what happens after that? Well, and then what happens after that? And right. have push it all the way to the end. And then it, the, the final piece of it is it's just chemical. Right, yeah. And <clears throat> that's one of the things that I talk to kids about too. Is we ha- I met I start to tell them a little bit about that it's like a car with the four wheels, and you've got the the, the feelings and, and emotions. I, I think feelings are only the chemicals. Mm-hmm. Emotions are kind of our label for them. Right. And your thoughts and your actions. And so you need all of these things on the four wheels of the car to make it go. Make it go. Oh, mm-hmm. beliefs is the fourth wheel. Yes, yes. right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you make it go. And they need to be in alignment. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. You, you can't let your thoughts drive. You can't let your beliefs drive. You kind of have to put it all together. That's a great one for adults too, because you're like, don't you use your wheels aligned every once in a while? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we know what that's like, right? Yeah. That's right. Don't you need your oil change? Oh, whatever. Yeah. The analogy works really well. The car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, Craig Sigel, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. Mental great. toughness trainer. Uh, we we got lots of great takeaways, and I'm sure our audience did as well. What I would love to leave. Our, our, uh, with, the, with the three things that he said he would yeah. love parents to know. Yeah. And yeah. I hope that I wrote it well enough so you guys mm-hmm. jump in. Mm-hmm. MentalToughnessTrainer.com and he says, if I could leave three points of parents, these is what I would tell them. Ask your kids if they're open to hearing your help. Have I said that before? Yes, yes you have. Once Ask yeah. your <laughs> kids. Don't just assume and go in Don't and, just give and them lecture them or whatever. Just empathy. Ask them. Empathy. Ask mm-hmm. them. The second point is do not um, tie approval to their performance. Love them if they they're great, they're good. And he gave a great example of you know a young lady coming off the soccer field and she missed the, the team goal and everybody else, all the teammates were sad, crying. all the coaches were sad, and her parents were like, "You rock, you're the best." And it's because they said, "Who else was brave enough to take that last shot? You were. I'm so proud of you for taking that courage." It's like. You know, a head spinner. Yeah. So don't base their, your approval on their performance. Base their approval on the fact that, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tired. And the third one is emphasize skill acquisition and effort. Don't emphasize success or all A's or perfection, but emphasize like, wow, 
you know, you've been practicing, you know, soccer for, you know, six months now. You didn't make this last goal, but you're six months stronger than you were right. or whatever. Where would you be if you hadn't been practicing? Where right. would you be if you hadn't been practicing? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So these three things, he said, leave that with the parents. Mm -hmm. Ask them if they want your help. Um, don't tie your approval to their performance. And the third one was emphasize skill acquisition effort. Not the process. So the, yeah, the process, yeah. not the, not the mm -hmm. results. So yeah. I love that. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Great and stuff. Thank you so much, Craig, for being with us. And thank you, reader, uh, not reader, but <laughs> listener and viewer, yeah. for being with us. And we ask you if you would please go to iTunes, either on your iPhone or on your computer, and leave us a rating and a review. And please share this episode with your family and friends so that they, too, can get the three important tips for what to do with their kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a, a, any episode, if you go to MightyMarriedMoms.com, we have a direct link to iTunes. Yeah, yeah. there's a link right yeah. there and right. subscribe. Yeah. Right, for the, for the rating and review, and if you have an Android phone, try Podcast Nation. Same. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Well, thanks everybody for being with us, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Mighty Married Moms. Tune in twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays to meet fascinating and inspiring guests who will help you create the life you've always wanted. You can find these episodes and special gifts just for you at MightyMarriedMoms.com as well as a link to our Facebook community where we continue the conversation around the kitchen table. Please also help share the love by leaving a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.